From New York, New York, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas, you rat bastard! <laughs> and now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. So many of us uh, get into relationships with people who, uh, well, they, they just don't understand the team concept. They don't get it. This is why I would insist on a prenup and people, you know, you have your money, I have my money. Why? Because so many people just waste it. They don't save it. They don't plan for the future. They don't plan for their retirement. They don't plan for investment. They don't plan. And many of us, when we get with somebody, we get with somebody who doesn't understand the game plan. We get with people who... uh they just need that cute stuff they see in the window of the store. They just need that junk. You know, to, <laughs> I have always said that, uh, a, yeah, you ever go to the mall with a woman who looks at store windows all the time and says, look at that, isn't that cute? Look at that, it's cute. And uh, whether it's a puppy dog or a glass figurine of a Smurf, uh, these are things that she thinks are cute today, but today's cute is tomorrow's crap. Tomorrow's garbage. Tomorrow's discards. Bottom line. And guys do it too. Guys waste money. Guys spend like there's no tomorrow. Um, I, I don't date guys, so I don't have this problem. All I can tell you is that um, I've been around women who just spend on anything. They just want to spend. They don't even want to spend money on stuff that makes them happy or stuff that it's the act of spending the money that makes them happy, not the actual item they're purchasing. To be with somebody who spends a lot of money, who wastes it, wastes it, drive me crazy. Everyone with somebody who, stupid thing. Everyone with somebody who just leaves all the lights on in the house, every room of the house, has three TVs on at the same time, one in every room of the house with his TV. <laughs> what is that all about? What is that? You know, if you save your money, you can get really cool stuff. Like maybe you can buy that house you can't afford, or maybe you can take that vacation you've been wanting. Well, there are some people who don't see the connection between wasting money on stupid stuff and the great stuff you could be getting later on. So I don't care if you're a man or a woman. Are you with somebody who does this, who spends on stupid stuff? And I want to specifically know what stupid things the man or woman in your life is spending money on. You tell me. 1 800 5 800 Tom. Like us. Like us. 1 800 5 800 866. Tom. 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 I totally want to be like you. The Tom Like You Show. It's the Tom Like You Show. Emanating from New York City. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Beth on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? No, I'm trying to hear you. Is this Tom? No, it's the other guy who says you're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uh, thank you. Do we have a conversation going or not? Well, uh, it doesn't sound like it, does it? Well, geez, I don't know. You're running the show, Buster. Do we or don't we? I said uh, the darling, first I tried to call you I did. You I about... said my line. My line was, you're on the Tom Likas show, hello. 
then that's where you fill in the reason you call. See, I didn't call you, sister. No, you no, called no. me. Let me tell you why I called you. I don't know. Maybe I missed this poignant little moment. I called to talk to you about parenthood. Apparently that's over. Is that true or not? Uh, darling, it is over. It is over? Yes. We have a never, another topic every hour on this program. Oh, well, great. You're just like school. You go through everything so quickly. Bop, 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 well, bop. that's right, because this is, you know what? This is a radio show, and well, it has a little faster pace, Grandma, than you're used to. Oh, really? Really? That's right. That's well, right. unfortunately, you know, your brain is so scattered, it's hard to keep up with it. You know? Darling, it nobody, puts a, gun your, nobody okay. puts a gun to your head to listen in. You know, you've always got nice old KABC over there you can be listening to, or KFI. Plenty of people your age tune in, very satisfied with what they're getting. Who this is not that kind of program. a talk show, you know, here in L.A., there aren't too many. I, am I, just, I, just, I just recommended a couple to you. Well, you can't. Well, you don't want to talk to me. You should be tuning in to a, a show that's for people your age. Well, you are such a son of a bitch. I, mean, I am wow. a son of a bitch. I'm a bastard. I, I didn't I'm an say a-hole. You're a bastard. I said you're a son of a bitch. I'm all, no, but I'm giving you my entire curriculum vitae. Okay, uh, I'm a bastard, it? son of a bitch, an a-hole. All of those. Now, seriously, Grandma, if you want a show for, for hip, happening people like you, you should go over to the John and Ken show on KFI. Perfect for women. You know what, age. my dear? I wanted to give you a little bit of grandmotherly advice then. You know, maybe you didn't have a grandmother. I don't know. Maybe you were just spawned. Spawned. Uh, darling, darling, I know you think you're clever, but again, that, that kind of humor gets big guffaws over there on KBC or uh, KRLA. But on this station, really, uh, it's old news. I can be sexy too, Monsieur. What I, do you I, want? I tend to doubt that. Oh, really? Yes. Well, give it a try. Because what I wanted to tell you, the French say that a person who has never had a who has never had a child is still a child himself. Which I can you. There's nothing wrong with being a child, darling. I have no problem with that because this child How is a self. How old are you? Thirty nine, forty nine, fifty nine. Who knows? This child is a self-made multimillionaire. This child shows up reliably at a responsible That's job the every problem. day. problem. You measure this child, your wealth in... This child owns a couple of pieces of uh, expensive real estate, to stocks, mutual funds. Right. Uh, this and child you tell owns me, bonds. on your deathbed, monsieur... Is that going to give you any sort of comfort, any sort of release? Any Darling, sort of all anything? you need to do is take a look at the assisted living facilities and the nursing homes in America and see how many people had children who never come to see them, who dump them off in these holding pens waiting to die. And you will see how rewarding uh, having children was for those people. Can you listen for one moment? I mean, no. you can't stop your rhetoric for an instant. Again, darling, darling, this is a dialogue, not a monologue. And if you're looking, no, look, I tell you what, if you want to press, if you want to, if, if somebody wants to press a button and get continuous hot air, they can go to the men's room. What? Thank you for calling. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Chris. What is that lady talking about? Gee. Well, not the topic, because the topic for people who have forgotten during her diatribe is I was asking about people who are in relationships with, with someone who spends too much money on stupid right. things. Well, you're talking to the right man. Do tell. I have a uh, girlfriend I've been with for three years, and any time she gets a paycheck, if it's not me buying her something, it's her going right to the mall to buy shoes, shoes, shoes and sometimes and the occasional large purse do you have the money do you have the money to pay for that well you know you're gonna tear me apart because i know how all this stuff goes i'm a recent college graduate and i'm uh in the market for a career so as of now no i don't well why uh why are you subsidizing that <laughs> you know i ask myself that every day I mean, do you have such low self-esteem that you feel you need to pay for good sex? <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, I knew the whole conversation because, I, you know, I heard this conversation, and I'm not paying for the sex. I put up with it, and she, more, about 75% of the time, she's paying for everything, dinner, food, drinks, 
whatever we do, she's the one paying for it, and uh, I just right have to now. Be here that's right an now, investment. Exactly. That's an investment in the future. Exactly. Because her ultimate goal is to get you to sign the contract, the marital contract, and then ultimately to tell you that she wants to uh, have a baby and quit her job. Yep. So this is an investment of the future. We talked today about that. Who said what? She said she wants to be a school teacher, and uh, ultimately she's gonna have she's gonna get knocked up and quit her job, and I'm gonna have to take over all the bills. There you go. Sucker, huh? A real sucker. Well, the fact that she's paying for everything today doesn't mean anything. Yeah, especially when they're so you know everything's so, so expendable, just going out so quickly and. It's such small amounts now in relation to how much expensive things are going to be later with houses and children and you name it. And not just children, but children for the uh, the following two decades. So for Great. a couple of years of her, you know, buying your popcorn at the movies, you're going to be paying through the nose. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. I've been listening to you for about six years now, and I love you. Can you take me out Kobe style? Before you go, what will you do about that situation? I guess just ride the wave, my friend. I don't know. I mean, I'll just keep letting her buy me things until uh, the day comes until, where we need to make a decision. Until she puts a pinhole in the condom? <laughs> <laughs> well, I got her taking the pills, and yes, I see her take it every day. And uh, I'm sure I could always be using condoms as well, but I'm not. I would if I were you. I know you would. Thanks, Father. Thank you for the call. I'll blow you up. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred. He's he'll marry her. Oh yeah, yeah he will. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom, that's our telephone number. Are you with somebody who spends and spends and spends on stupid things? Stupid things. Jim in Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. You're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Monsieur. Hello, Jim. <laughs> Tom, I know from having listened to you for many, many years that one of the very few French people that you care anything about, what they say, is the Baron Philippe Rothschilds. I do indeed. Yes, yes, yes. And also, little Opus One is never too bad on a nice occasion, is it? it may be, I would like it coming out of my faucet, frankly. <laughs> hey, my friend, I got to tell you, I'm married to a wonderful lady, been married to her for a long time, but I swear she cannot leave the house without coming back with something that she bought. She cannot leave the house. You wanted to know a specific item. One time she came back from, I don't know where she was, you know, and hey, I, we, it's, it's not like we don't have the money, but it's just the thought that why do you need to buy something every time you leave the house? She came back with a little tiny miniature shopping cart, all chrome and, you know, looked exactly Exactly like a full-size shopping cart. I said, what are we going to do with that? And you know what she did? She put it on top of the TV console, the console where we've got our entertainment system. It sat there for months. I still don't know what it signifies, why she bought it, or anything like that. It's crazy. Unbelievable. Yeah, I don't get well, it. Yeah, well, I, I don't get it either. But, uh, hey, let me ask you a quick question. Right. When you when you go to Mastro's and you're having dinner at Mastro's and you're going to have a cocktail an app, uh, a cocktail before dinner, do you drink bourbon? Do you like bourbon? And if so, what's your call? What's your brand? Booker's. Booker's, yeah. How about Basil Hayden? Do you like Basil Hayden? I love Basil Hayden, and Booker's and Basil Hayden are both made by the same company. Yes, that's true. In fact, that's the subsidiary of the Jim Beam Corporation, is it not? Right. Yes, yeah. but Booker, yeah. Booker's is even better. Yeah, okay, I'm going to give that a shot. Now, how about a Manhattan? Do you like a Manhattan occasionally? Absolutely. Okay, buddy, thanks for taking my call. You guys rock. Take me out, Kobe. Here you go, Jim. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. You're a beat in my heart. Oh. You're there, I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. This is Carrie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. How are you? Great. That's good. I was calling because Tom, I want to know a couple things. One, are you lonely? 
Not even a little bit. Not at all. Not, you know, ever just like sitting at home and think, God, you know, I really wish that, you know, I had somebody who really knew me and, you know. Plenty of people really, wait, 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 stop right there. Plenty of people really know me, really know me, and they've known me for decades. What about a female? Uh, They don't have to be female. It has nothing to do with it. Okay, what about when you get, you know, older and you can't do for yourself and all of that? There is no guarantee that a female is going to do those things when someone gets older. None. True. But, and you, you said, you know, the whole kid thing, and I understand because I don't have any myself, but I often wonder, I mean, I have my nieces and nephews and all that, but I look at, like, my dad, he just died a little while ago passed away and you know all of us were around him and he had his kids and you know you just never get worry about any of that or think about darling it i've or- got i've got really close friends I, I do have family members i'm close to uh i do not need to procreate uh in order to have people around me true what about, and you never, ever, ever want to get married again? Never. Why would I want to do that? It was enough for you? Uh, I've had enough. Uh, there's, there's no benefit to a man to get married. One of them really, 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 really hurt you? It has nothing to do with it. Um, I don't want to be in a position where I risk giving up half of everything I've earned to another person. What if you married her out of state? <laughs> uh, yeah, it has nothing to do with where you get married. It has to do with where you get divorced. Really? Really. Oh, that's good to know. I have to, I'll remember that. Sass, so if you want to take someone to the cleaners, uh, New York or California, two best places to do it. Oh, no, I don't want to take them to the cleaners. I wasn't thinking about that. I don't really want anybody who, you know, I think the one who has the money is the one who's in control, and I'm good. I don't want to be controlled, so in that respect. See, you you probably agree with me more than you think. No kids, no husband, no boyfriend, happy the way you are. Actually, I do. I do have a, a boyfriend, but no, we're you know, yeah. I I was married for thirteen years, and it would take somebody really. I mean, they'd have to just blow me away to make me want to do that again. Because and it, your boyfriend does not really blow you away. <laughs> oh no, I guess not. <laughs> not a, no, I God, I don't know. It seems kind of. Claustrophobic, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> and, like, as soon as that ring goes on your finger, it starts to cut the blood off. <laughs> 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 and it just starts choking your heart, and all the blood isn't going to your heart anymore, and then soon you die. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I am telling you, what I said to the caller earlier, you know, one look, at, if you've ever been to an assisted living facility, and I have, or if you've yeah. been to a nursing home, uh, you will see... The laundry list of people who had kids that do not care about them, do not talk to them, and do not take care of them. So, Tom, don't you think that's because those parents were not very good parents? They weren't really, you know, nice. No, I, I believe, I believe that in the. By the way, it's not the same in other countries as it is in the United States. In the United States, um, I, I read a very interesting book about this when I was in college. And um, I still own the book. I cannot remember the title because I read it 35 years ago. But let me tell you this. In this country, we're all about independence. Independence, we're free spirits. We have a declaration of independence. The word independence comes up a lot. And um, we even have uh, parents who, when kids turn 18 or 21, they say, don't let the door hit you on the way out. True. True. And that's you see what stupid. I'm saying? Yeah. Well, yeah. well, the point is, what what then do these people expect <laughs> when they need help later on, when they tell their kids, get out and get a job, you bum? Right. And then, uh, yeah, and how you're not equipped to barely wipe your own bottom at 18, <laughs> much less take care of yourself. Well, that, that, but in this country, that's what we do. 
Right. Also, in the you know, in other countries, your parents live with you when they can't work anymore, and your grandparents live with you. Uh, but Americans, we don't do that. That's this true. idea that, that this idea that you're going to marry somebody and they're going to be cleaning your bedpan for you, guaranteed, is is a it's laughable. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I just I look at at my dad, and I guess not everybody is the same way because you know we all were there for him. So I don't know. I guess, and for me, the thought of being a uh, you know being old and you know being all by myself is just absolutely frightening and very sad. So. <laughs> Well, I understand that, uh, but that's uh, that's why you have to make other plans in life. You know, it is true. You can't choose your uh, family, but you can choose your friends. And um, I uh, I choose to be around people who are much more reliable, dependable, uh, people who really care about me, keep in touch with me, rather than many of the members of my own family. Yeah, yeah, you've got a point. You're right. You're right. Absolutely. I mean, if you look at the look at the divorce rate, uh, you know, if if you think getting married guarantees you're going to have somebody to empty your bedpan, think about it. One out of two marriages end in divorce. Yeah, I have my own, own whole philosophy on why it all ends in divorce, but you know, that's well, probably why it doesn't matter why. All that matters is that it does. Yeah, that's pretty sad. I think we're all selfish. That's the biggest reason. Well, but the thing is, there's nothing new about that. People have always been selfish. People have always done what they want to do, what's good for them. They look out for number one. Nothing new about that. That's the people who have kids and don't have kids. It's just the way it is. The parent who kicks you out at 18 is just as selfish as the child who refuses to take care of an elderly parent when the parent is 70 years old. You're absolutely right. And do you know, I, let me give you an example. You know, many people told me that I should send money to my parents when they needed money. My parents died in the 90s, but when they needed money, I was told, you should send them money. And uh, what everyone conveniently forgot about was the following. When I was a child, um, I had one of those student savings accounts at the bank. They come into the school, they start you a savings account. And I put, I saved nickels and quarters. I spent, spent time rolling pennies and stuff and deposited, you know, I'd make a $2 deposit and a $5 deposit and a 50 cent deposit. Whatever the deposit was, they would take it. I would give it. And by the time I turned 10 years old, I had $168 saved. $168. Wow. And when my parents wanted to buy a house, they took advantage of the fact that that account was not in my name. I was too young to have my own account. So it was um, in their name in trust for me. And my parents took the $168 unilaterally and used it to put a down payment on a house. A house I hated. <laughs> Later, uh, when I was uh, leaving uh, New York and I had a radio job, but I was in debt and I needed to borrow $500 for five weeks. And I told them the date of repayment... I would repay with interest, what have you. Uh, they simply said no. No. That was it. No. So, no explanation, no reason? Uh, well, I know the reason. My father didn't want me going into the radio business. Oh. So here's, the, so here's the deal. Later on, when they needed money, can you blame me for saying no? No. I would have brought up the fact that they didn't give me the 500 and that they took my 160. <laughs> I will tell you what, in the cultures where people's parents move in with them when they get older, uh, those parents would give their kids anything. Yeah. They would do anything for them, work extra jobs so they could have stuff. I mean, those parents really, really, really gave their kids everything they could. But in this country, you have parents who are like my father was. And yeah. my father was just a dictatorial jerk. Wow. So why in the world would I want to then reward him for the way he treated me as a kid? I uh, I agree. Were you speaking with him, you know, prior to him passing away? We were speaking, but we were speaking in this kind of, you know, I had a very complicated relationship with my dad. I I loved him and I wanted to spend time with him and he was yeah. never around. And when he was around, he was a crank. 
Wow. And, uh, it, you know, the fact is that uh, I don't think, you know what, everything should be reciprocated. It should be a two-way street. I don't believe parents deserve any more respect than the children do. True. Yeah, I think everything should be a two-way street, but, like selfishness, that doesn't always happen. You can well, do and do and do for somebody, and nine times out of ten, people don't even appreciate it. They just take well, advantage of you. That's entirely possible. But my point is, as far as selfishness is concerned, this is the way it is. Getting married to somebody or uh, living with somebody doesn't guarantee they're going to be around to do anything for you. You just made right. my point for me. You're right. Tom, I may not agree with everything you say on every level, but I do find you fascinating, and I've really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you. Appreciate the call. Uh, she called up with a chip on her shoulder, but uh, well, you see what happened to that. It's just past half past the hour on the Tom Likas show. And we're talking about those of you out there who have relationships with people who spend like drunken sailors. They buy stupid stuff. Are you with somebody like that? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Liza on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Great. Awesome. Um, well, I, my past relationship, I had a ex-boyfriend that had a serious problem on spending weed, but it was his own medication, I guess, and I agree with a lot of things you say that it, it's stupid and you need to involve yourself in more extracurricular activities. And I am in a... Um... By the way, let me point something out to you, and I'm not being facetious here, okay? Yes, sir. If, if you don't like your fiancé spending money on weed... Oh, no, it's not my fiancé. No, that was, that's the ex-boyfriend. My fiancé is a totally different story. Oh, okay. I thought they were one of the same. No, sir. Uh, my fiancé... Oh, yeah. well, uh, oh, but, but, and maybe you did it, but any time you're with somebody and they're doing something like that, the thing to do is not to fix them. The thing to do is leave. Yes, I did. I totally did. I packed my bags and left. Good. So uh, my fiancé does have a little bit of a spending problem. It's um, He's a huge SC fan. Um and it, it's football pretty much every weekend, and he he doesn't care. It's pretty much um, what money goes. It's what money's earned is money spent. And I totally believe in savings. I we're planning for a wedding, and I'm like kind of okay. It's it's supposed to be a, it's supposed to be two persons working on this, but yeah, you're running probably <laughs> chewing me up for the getting married part. But yes, <sighs> that's pretty much it. He, I mean, it's. It goes, I mean, it's outrageous spending. If we had a boiling pot, if you're, he's Cajun, so it's like a crab, and I mean, you could have like a hot dogs or something. It's cool. It's some uh -huh. chips and salsa, but yes. it's, it's kind of, it's, it, the price has got that. I mean, it's 600 bucks going down the drain. Easily, you can, um, he could save money. He's having car problems now, and I'm like, hey, well, that, e that money easily could have gone to fix your, uh, fix your car or a down payment to another car or something. <laughs> Right. All right. Now, if you feel that way about him, why would you marry him? Um, I'm trying to. We're, it's one of the things. It's big change, and I made self sacrifices. Where I mean, you're talking about purse, Prada, um, big designer bags, and I've kind of I've taken that down. I don't wear. I don't shop as much as I used to, and I mean, it's one of those things that you love. And this is a person I wouldn't mind changing his bedpan when he's older. <laughs> he's a couple years older than me, but. And, I mean, when it comes to that time, you know? Yeah, but what makes you think he's going to change at that time? Uh, well, it's one of those things you can hope for. No, no, but Donning, Donning, you, you can't build your life on hoping somebody's going to change. Yes, sir. This is who he is, and it's who he's going to be. Well, I, so, I mean, Tom, you've been married several times, and... But have you gone through anything like this? I don't mean, you think I don't you think I've learned something and all that? Yes, I believe. <laughs> Dad, I'm asking for advice. Come on. People don't change. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I'm I'm like one day I'm hoping to have a, a beautiful house. Um, to own I'm hope property. I'm hoping that on December 24th, uh, a, a little old man in a red suit is going to come down my chimney. <laughs> But you know what? He's stiffed me the last 51 years. Hmm. Me too, huh? <laughs> That's my point. I can hope all I want. <laughs> that whatever happened in the past is likely to be what's going to happen in the future. True. 
So, I mean, you don't think like, there's any way that we can go through, like, a te- not like learning seminar, but from even no. basic savings? He doesn't want to do it. Uh, I don't know, Tom. <laughs> and, darling, I see here he's 29 years old. He's, you know, when you're 29, you should be all grossed up by now. True. And I guess I, I guess this is, this is the part where I, we flip-flop. Whereas I'm 23 and I'm not the crazy inner 20 spender <laughs> where I used to be. But, oh, gosh, I feel like an old woman. <laughs> Darling, uh, it's just that uh, you have a different attitude about money. And uh, take it from someone who's been divorced four times. If you have a different attitude about money, you'll never fix that. Wow. You see, uh, spending money is uh, very much connected to values. Somebody who likes to spend money differently than you has different values than you have. Hmm. For example, um, you know, when you're, let's say you want to get married, have kids, have a family, have a house, whatever. In order to have a house, you have to, you have to sacrifice, you have to save, you have to give up on a lot of those little purchases. That's true. Well, so it isn't just that he wants to spend money on stupid stuff. He He doesn't care about the outcome of not saving the money. That's true. And never will. And his dad's an accountant. <laughs> Darling, many, many, many boys are a reaction against their dads, by the way, including me. Wow. It's, I mean, it's, it, obviously it tags along with upbringing. And I, I lived in a home where my mother, I mean, I, it's a Filipino, my, grew up a Filipino home. And my mom would give me everything and she's expecting me <laughs> to be living in my house. And I'm the youngest, I'm the youngest girl. I'm the youngest uh-huh. child, actually, so... Right. Oh, my. Wow. Hang on a second here. Hang on a second, Liza. Don't go anywhere. Cheryl, what did you want to say to Liza? This gal is on drugs, and she is headed for a disaster. She needs to get out of that relationship. Everything he's doing, he will do more. It will get worse and worse and worse. It's an addiction. He's He's... You're crazy. Get yourself somebody that you can live with that doesn't have that problem. <sighs> Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Tom. Oh, you're 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 really you're making a huge huge mistake. That problem will not go away. It will get worse, compounded monthly, daily, yearly. I mean, until you're you're until you have nothing. You will never uh, Cheryl, have anything. Cheryl, correct me if I'm wrong here, as I tell Liza. Um, once he signs the marital contract and feels like he is an indentured servant, he will act badly. He will react against that by doing even more of the things you don't like. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, have, I had someone like that who put me in the poorhouse, and I asked him if he thought he had a problem. He told me no. I immediately packed my bags and walked out the door. Wow. What do you think? What do you think, Liza? I mean, it's I, I guess it's the vicious cycles of relationships that I've been in. And, I mean, I've dated him. We've dated on, on and off for a long time, for about five years now. And I've just we've been actually the past two years more um, committed than ever. And I actually haven't really seen this trend. Before. I mean, he was, it went from... I mean, even with job ethics, I mean, we have, we're having issues on, but I, I definitely see where you guys are both coming from. It seems like to me that you know and you can see what's going on. You just have to have enough guts to walk away from it. And I have a feeling Liza's driven too far down the driveway to back the car out. <laughs> yeah, probably, Tom. She'll have to learn the hard way, like all of us, I guess. She's going to do it anyway. She's going to marry him, and then she's going to say, Well, why won't you change? You need to change. It's definitely an addiction. It's a, like a gambling addiction. It's just Well, uh, it's beyond that. I mean, it's just who he is. Right. It's who he is. Okay, Tom, I, I'll go. It was great talking to you. Love being on your what? show. Liza, before you go, yes, what Tom. are you going to do? 
I need to get out. <laughs> you do. That's it. I mean, I'm, you're, I, I've seen it. My mom, my, I'm, a, I'm a product of an unsuccessful divorce, and unfortunately, I mean, it's, it's. I could say, I can kind of save my future along with my children's, and I definitely. <laughs> But thank you, Tom. I appreciate your time. And right. that's it. <laughs> All right, Liza. Good luck. Thanks a lot for the call. Tom, Tom, Tom like it. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. I'm not paying anybody's student loans off. I'm not paying anybody's car payments. I'm not helping anybody pay the mortgage on their grandmother's uh, house. I'm not doing it. Damn straight, Tom preaching. It's the Tom Like It Show. From New York City, the Tom Likas Show, 1-800-5800-TOM. Are you in a relationship with somebody who spends money like a nut? They just spend on crazy stuff. Crazy stuff. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. If you're in a relationship with somebody who spends like a drunken sailor, are you? 1-800-5800-8800. Six six is our telephone number. Edward on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing today, Tom? Doing okay, Edward. Good. Glad to uh, glad to be on. I got one for you. Uh, I'm in a uh, let's see here. Going on eight. I've, I've known my wife for eighteen years. We've been married for eight years. I'm only. I'll be thirty four. Coming up in December. Um, my wife actually just. Uh, she's been do- up to no good for the past couple years. She embezzled. Hundred and sixty one thousand uh, dollars. What? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. I, I figured you'd I definitely need your opinion on this. Hundred and sixty one thousand dollars she went through in I guess about a year and a half. On top of her salary she was getting paid, you know, a good sixty thousand dollars a year salary and plus the money I would give her every couple of weeks from you know, I, I would pay the bills obviously, so or she was spending I would say Within that two years, you know, well over a quarter million dollars on, on just frivolous, you know, crap. How did you find out she was an embezzler? Uh, she was uh, a detective. Well, she was fired, actually. So I originally found out. and She, she came uh, clean and, you know, didn't make it really sound like it was that much money. But, uh, you know, once, uh, you know, the DA picked up the case, obviously, and prosecuted her, you know, we found out what, uh, you know, what was taken and whatnot. So, you know, you think you know somebody after, you know, 18 years and, uh, you know, something like this happens. So, uh, and I'm, I'm stuck now. I have, I have one beautiful seven month old boy. This is just all recent, Tom. Uh, this all just, you know, happened the last couple of weeks. Uh, so I'm, st- I'm stuck at home raising a seven month old now. My wife's in prison. She, she's pregnant with another, uh, child. And, uh, of I'm yours? Stuck- of, of mine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm, I'm I'm running a company by myself, and we just I just started a new corporation. It's just informed, so you know there's there's just no time for. I mean, the, the, my son's at a babysitter, obviously, to, you know, pretty much, you know, like tonight for example, I won't even get to uh, see him because I'm going to be at home too late and up too early, so I won't even be bothering him. But it's just uh, kind of a weird situation right now that I'm in. You know, knowing this lady for all my, I mean, more than half my life. I'm like I said, I'll, I'll be 34. You know, I'm it's 16 years old. I moved in with them. You know, it, her and her parents. It's just uh, I kind of just I don't know what to do. I just, I don't know how I'm supposed to feel or anything. So, wow. So, yeah. What do you What do you think, there, bud? Well, I mean, how you're supposed to feel? You. <laughs> I mean, let's face it. It's it's horrific. It's terrible. It's awful. Yes. Awful. What what do you and, suggest I do now with my life uh, since she's gone? I mean, she'll probably be locked up for a year or so, but, you know, I just... I'd want to get as far away from her as I could. Right, right. That's kind of how I feel. But at the same time, being in a marriage for eight, you know, being knowing your soulmate for 18 years, it's, you know, you're, you're together and, you know, you don't really expect something like this to happen. Uh, so I still, you know, love her, obviously, but, you know, I just, obviously I'm... I'm pretty hurt at this all, you know, and what I'm left with now, I'm, I'm left with a financial debt of $161,000 she stole on top of, you know, paying for everything else I pay for in life. 
to run my my company and you know my corporation. So it's just. It's and you're not scary. you're you're not you're not implicated in this in any way, are you? No, sir. We had separate bank accounts. I was definitely smarter than that. I've, I've never had a sold. I've, I've always had a separate bank account. So that's what uh, you know, kind of saved me. Obviously, being married to her, you know, well, how how come you didn't know this was all going on? And you know, come to think of it, what was so uh, when they when it, when they audited everything, you know, not only did she have money coming in from her paycheck, from you know, embezzled money. Well, every two weeks, I would transfer money right from my ATM, right, and she'd, she'd say, "I need uh, two thousand for bills." I'm like, "Okay, two thousand went right into her account." So, I'm actually putting money all into her account during all this this time. You know, she's actually, and I'm I'm looking at you know some of the receipts. Sometime a couple occasions, I asked her. I, I said. God, you know, how how come there's over ten, twelve grand in here, you know? And uh oh no, there's not the, the car payments, you know, house payment, insurance, blah blah blah. It's all and half of that's going out. So thinking, okay, you know, I kinda believe they're my family. They uh, you know, kinda asked me, you know, where's all this money coming from? I'm like I basically just asked them kinda like, What do you what do you mean? You know, I I don't understand. It's we're doing I'm doing well, she's doing well. She's like all these gifts and stuff my wife was buying for the families were I guess were pretty pretty pricey and hell I don't know what's going on I'm out on the field all day she's out shopping. Oh, gee, you're killing me! You are absolutely killing me. Our email address is my name, Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likes Show.